Today on Applied Science, we're going to take a look at the hardware that superimposes the date onto film photographs. This is something I always wondered about as a kid because the print is actually on the negative, and so the height of these characters is super tiny, and I've never seen an LED display or anything that's this small. And as it turns out, the thing that does this is a super miniature, very simple LCD projector that's with a folded optical path that's powered by an incandescent light bulb. So this turned out to be a pretty interesting teardown, and I thought you'd find it interesting too. I bought this camera myself sometime around 1990, and as it happens, 2019 is actually the highest year that this thing can uh, register. So the way this works is we set the date on the back here, and we've gotten up to 2019, and then it cycles around back to 1990 again. So I've outlived the camera, and it's now's a good time to do a teardown. Um, at the time, this was a big purchase for me. I think I seem to remember this being about 20 or $30. Uh, but the point is that the 20 or $30 is not a lot for a camera, even in 1990. And this feature of having the date super imprinted was not restricted to just high-end models. So the technology that goes into here has to be cheap or else it wouldn't work. It's been a long time since I've seen a roll of film, but I actually happen to have one still kicking around in the closet, which is great because we can see how this is going to work. So we load the film in like this, and it's pulled across by these cogged wheels here and the way that you do this is just sort of leave a little tail of film in there and it will wind it up. I was actually very proud that this camera was auto loading and auto advancing, fully motorized, which was nice because my previous camera was manual so I thought this was a huge upgrade. Uh, but anyway we have these uh, electrical contacts here and spring-loaded pogo pins here which we'll probe in a minute and then importantly there's this spring-loaded pressure plate on the back, and the point of this is to keep the film very flat. Um, if this is out of plane at all, the picture won't be in focus. So there has to be this spring-loaded plate here. It's critical that the film is really flat. Um, and just looking at this, it's not immediately obvious where that date superimpo superimposing comes from, right? There's a little window here just so we can see the, what kind of film you have loaded. Um, there's a little light seal around there so that when you look in, the light doesn't go in and spoil the pictures. But other than that, um, it's, it's a very thin sort of back here, and it's not obvious where the date comes from. So we'll pull off this pressure plate and keep digging into it to see what's going on. The plate is spring-loaded, and I've already kind of pulled it apart a little bit, so I'm just going to get the rest of it off here. But this, this was actually mounted quite a bit more securely than that makes it look. Um, and now it's starting to become a little bit more obvious. There is a window here that looks suspicious, and that window lines up with this window in the pressure plate. And so this is starting to seem like this is where it is. And remember, the, the pictures will actually be upside down relative to the scene that you're taking because of the lens, right? So it is upside down, and the date is in the lower right corner of the picture when it's printed. So it's in the upper right corner here because it's mirrored uh, in the film. And then uh, there is a suspicious looking door over here. So let's open this up. And that does in fact turn out to be a battery chamber. So there's a tiny CR1025 battery in the back and clearly that powers the date because I pulled the battery out and now this is off. Uh, but there's also batteries in the camera. There's two double A's that drive the motor and, um, and the shutter in here. And so we'll probe this next and figure out uh, between the battery and these contacts what the electrical input is to this uh, date back system. Okay, I've got the scope hooked up to these spring-loaded pogo pins here with the ground clip on the rightmost pin. And uh, there's four here, but there's only two terminals in the camera, so I'll just kind of align it so we get a signal there. And then when I hold the shutter button down, there's about 2.25, almost 2.5 volts applied to these terminals. And it's always there as long as the shutter button is held down. It's not like a controlled timed pulse or anything. So originally I thought that the camera might be controlling this, the exposure produced by this date superimposing hardware, but it looks like that's not the case. There's no timing being done in the camera body. So as long as you're holding the button down, it's applying voltage to the back. Um, and then I originally thought that maybe the power for this date superimposing hardware is coming from the camera, since there's two large AA batteries in the camera body, but there's only that tiny coin cell in the back. I was thinking maybe it's doing something clever by sending power to the back, but uh, as we'll see, that's actually not quite the case. It's just a signal, uh, and uh, we'll tear this down and see what's next. 
Once removing the pressure plate from the back of the film, it's pretty obvious where the screws are. So we'll just go ahead and take those out. And then this whole thing comes out and we can see that there's some typical conductive rubber puck buttons. And on the back side of this, we're finally getting somewhere. So what's interesting is that the module itself that creates this, um, this date thing is actually kind of separate from the camera. And it's not surprising because you'd imagine that <clears throat> the manufacturer that makes these date modules wants to put these in all kinds of different cameras. And so it makes sense that there's kind of one module and then they just put this in all kinds of different camera uh, proto or, uh, models. I really love how tiny the display is. There's just something about having this like micro seven segment display that's really cool. And it's completely unpowered now and we can see all the digits, which indicates that this is probably some kind of LCD tech. Um, it shows up even better on the camera, maybe due to something with the polarization or something like that. But let's connect some power to it and see if it'll work outside the camera. Okay, we've got this thing hooked up. Uh, one set of leads goes to a DC power supply just to simulate the coin cell. And the other set of leads goes to a pulse generator simulating pressing the shutter button once a second. So just to get this thing to trigger often. And at first it doesn't really seem like anything's happening, but if we look close, there is something coming out the window, but it may not be what you'd expect. Like it doesn't look like a seven segment display. And there's a good reason for that. Um, the fact that this is off the film plane adds an additional optical constraint here, right? So let me get a seven segment display out so we can see what's going on here. Imagine that this projection screen is the film plane and that this little seven segment display is what we're using to impress the date onto it. You can see that if we're held back a little ways, the image is not very good, right? Because the light is spraying out from this display in all directions. It has to be in contact with the film plane to get a good transfer. But that's physically not possible with our setup because in the camera, the pressure plate is pushing the film down and then the electronics have to be offset behind that pressure plate by a couple millimeters, maybe even three or four millimeters at least. And the only alternative was to be to have the electronics floating on the spring itself, which is one idea, but that means floating the battery and the circuit board and everything else. And that does sound kind of difficult. So actually this date superimposition is done with a projector. The optics are not like a seven segment display. Purposefully, it doesn't produce a nice, easy to read image like this. It's actually shooting the light out like a projector so that it forms an image on a plane that's a good, you know, three or four millimeters away, a tiny little micro projector. So to see this projector in action, what I'm gonna do is add our simulated film plane here, this uh, projection screen, it's basically tracing paper. And I'm gonna turn the room lights out and turn the camera exposure up to see if we can see this thing in action. So sure enough, when we add a projection screen, suddenly this makes sense where it's actually producing the image a few millimeters away from the screen. So it's not really like a seven segment display that's meant to be looked at. It really is much more like a projector. So let's open this thing up to see how they built a projector in such an incredibly thin and incredibly low cost device. Okay, so we'll open this up and we can see that this side still has the LCD in there and it's kind of an unusual LCD. It's quite dark. It reminds me of like a welding helmet, like an automatic welding helmet. And you can hold this up to the light and almost nothing comes through. So it's, it's a little bit of an unusual LCD. And then on this side, the circuit board, there's a light source behind here and the light comes up through this window, shines through the LCD and that's what makes this projector. So if we carefully lift the circuit board off without disturbing the other stuff behind it, we can see that there is a little mirror in there. It's actually a little tiny glass mirror and another LCD with another set of uh, zebra stripe rubber conductive connectors. And on the other side of this is the LCD that the user sees to set the date on the back of the camera. So where's the light source? Well, first of all, there's no optics. The only thing that's in here is a, a mirror and then the LCD we've seen, there's no lenses or focusing or anything like that. And the light source is here. It's actually this cheap uh, incandescent grain of wheat bulb. And um, 
remember this is 1990, so LEDs were around, but not nearly as common as today. But I think there's another reason that they wanted to use an incandescent bulb like this, and that is that it's a point light source. In those days, pretty much all the LEDs were very soft, diffused LEDs and were, had a very, generally a, a large light source. But for this projector, basically what this is is a shadow puppet projection system. So the way this works is if you have a very distant light source and you put something in the path, you can project the image you know, a little ways away. But if your light source is close, or if uh, the image that you, if the thing that you're projecting is close, then the image is not so good and eventually it goes away entirely. Um, so the idea is that without any optics at all, or with a point light source that's ideally pretty far away, you can make this projector system pretty clever actually. I think it's uh, a very good use of low cost tech to make this uh, very effective system. So since this turned out to be just a shadow puppet projector, you might be thinking that we could do something similar with an all-mechanical device instead of an LCD. And you'd be right. I, I did some research, and as near as I can tell, the oldest or the first date back or data back for a camera was the Nikon MF10. And it appears to be entirely mechanical. You actually have these cute little plug-in modules where you can set the date or use an analog wristwatch sort of module, and it shines light through the hands of the watch or through these little shutters, mechanical shutters, to imprint the date or the time onto your photos. Unfortunately, this whole thing sells for about $1,000 on eBay, so it would be kind of inappropriate to buy one just for a teardown, um, but maybe someday, or maybe if people are super interested, uh, we can make that happen. I thought we'd have some fun with this thing, and so I dremeled a slot in the back case here. So instead of the internal light source with the mirror, I've cut a hole where the mirror, mirror used to be, and then set up this diffused light source behind it so that the light shines through the LCD. And I actually discovered something in the process. You can see that the update rate is much slower for the tiny LCD than it is for the big LCD. I have the button wired up to the signal generator so it just cycles through because it looks cool. And then I, you know, after doing that, I noticed that the update rate was slow on this tiny LCD. So there is something weird going on. It's not a, a totally normal LCD. It's probably optimized for really good light blocking um, and, and slow update because what ends up happening is the thing changes the state of the LCD and then just flashes the light to expose the film. But it is cool because I can change the color of the LED behind there. Of course, with the modern LEDs, you, know, you get all these colors. But after doing this, I was thinking, yeah, wait a minute. How come, how come every uh, superimposed date on a piece of film I've ever seen is always that red color? Um, originally, I was thinking maybe it was because they used red LEDs, but that's not the case. They're using white light, so why is it not white? Check this out. I think I actually figured it out why. Remember that how this works is the film is loaded in the camera like this. So this is the photosensitive side, and this is the back of the film. And the date is projected through the film to the photosensitive layer. And look what happens if we project light through there. It's that orange color again. So if we're on, this is a very cool cool white source, so it really is orange. Um, if we're on this side of the film shooting light through, then the light that manages to make it through to the photosensitive layer is in fact pretty orange. And you know, this makes sense. If you've ever seen um, a negative for color film, it always has this orange color everywhere. So I think, at least in part, it's actually the color of the base of the film itself that's imparting this orange glow. And that's part of the reason why the date is always orange on these um, films. So anyway, it was something I've been wondering about for a long time. Hope you found that interesting, and I will see you next time. Bye.